Chapters 13 through 16 of the Gospel according to Mark. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Gospel according to Mark, from the New Testament in Modern Speech, translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Chapters 13 through 16. Chapter 13. As he was leaving the temple, one of his disciples exclaimed, Look, Rabbi, what wonderful stones, what wonderful buildings! You see all these great buildings, Jesus replied. Not one stone will be left here upon another, not thrown down. He was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite to the temple, when Peter, James, John, and Andrew, apart from the others, asked him, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these predictions are on the point of being fulfilled? So Jesus began to say to them, Take care that no one misleads you. Many will come assuming my name and saying, I am he, and they will mislead many. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Come they must, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise in arms against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, there will be earthquakes in various places, there will be famines. These miseries are but like the early pains of childbirth. You yourselves must be on your guard. They will deliver you up to Sanhedrins. You will be brought into synagogues and cruelly beaten, and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake, to be witnesses to them for me. But the proclamation of the good news must be carried to all the Gentiles before the end comes. When, however, they are marching you along under arrest, do not be anxious beforehand about what you are to say, but speak what is given you when the time comes, for it will not be you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to be killed, and fathers will betray children, and children will rise against their parents and have them put to death. You will be objects of universal hatred because you are called by my name, but those who stand firm to the end will be saved. As soon, however, as you see the abomination of desolation standing where he ought not, let the reader observe these words, then let those in Judea escape to the hills. Let him who is on the roof not come down and enter the house to fetch anything out of it, and let not him who is in the field turn back to pick up his outer garment. And alas for the women who at that time are with child or have infants, but pray that it may not come in the winter." For those will be times of suffering the like of which has never been from the first creation of God's world until now, and assuredly never will be again. And but for the fact that the Lord has cut short those days, no one would escape. But for the sake of his own people whom he has chosen for himself, he has cut short the days. At that time, if anyone says to you, See, here is the Christ, or See, he is there, do not believe it. For there will rise up false Christs and false prophets, displaying signs and prodigies with a view to lead astray, if indeed that were possible, even God's own people. But as for yourselves, be on your guard. I have forewarned you of everything. At that time, however, after that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not shed her light. The stars will be seen falling from the firmament, and the forces which are in the heavens will be disordered and disturbed. And then will they see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send forth the angels and gather together his chosen people from north, south, east, and west, from the remotest parts of the earth and the sky. Learn from the fig tree the lesson it teaches. As soon as its branch has become soft and it is bursting into leaf, you know that summer is near. So also do you when you see these things happening. Be sure that he is near at your very door. I tell you in solemn truth that the present generation will certainly not pass away without all these things having first taken place. Earth and sky will pass away, but it is certain that my words will not pass away. But as to that day, or the exact time, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. Take care, be on the alert and pray, for you do not know when it will happen. It is like a man living abroad who has left his house and given the management to his servants, to each one his special duty, and has ordered the porter to keep awake. Be wakeful, therefore, for you know not when the master of the house is coming, 
in the evening, at midnight, at cock-crow, or at dawn. Beware, lest he should arrive unexpectedly and find you asleep. Moreover, what I say to you, I say to all, be wakeful. Chapter 14 It was now two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the high priests and scribes were bent on finding how to seize him by stratagem and put him to death. But they said, Not on the festival day, for fear they should be a riot among the people. Now when he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, while he was at table, there came a woman with a jar of pure, sweet-scented ointment, very costly. She broke the jar and poured the ointment over his head. But there were some who said indignantly among themselves, Why has the ointment been thus wasted? For that ointment might have been sold for fifteen pounds or more, and the money hath been given to the poor. And they were exceedingly angry with her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why are you troubling her? She has done a most gracious act towards me. For you always have the poor among you, and whenever you choose you can do acts of kindness to them, but me you have not always. What she could, she did. She has perfumed my body in preparation for my burial. And I solemnly tell you that wherever in the whole world the good news shall be proclaimed, this which she has done shall also be told in remembrance of her. But Judas Iscariot, already mentioned as one of the twelve, went to the high priests to betray Jesus to them. They gladly listened to his proposal and promised to give him a sum of money, so he looked out for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the day for killing the Passover lamb, his disciples asked him, Where shall we go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples with instructions, saying, Go into the city, and you will meet a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him, and whatever house he enters, tell the master of the house. The rabbi asks, Where is my room where I can eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will himself show you a large room upstairs, ready furnished. There make preparation for us. So the disciples went out and came to the city, and found everything just as he had told them. And they got the Passover ready. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And while they were at table, Jesus said, I solemnly tell you, that one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were filled with sorrow, and began asking him one by one, Not I, is it? It is one of the twelve, he replied, he who is dipping his fingers in the dish with me. For the Son of Man is going his way, as it is written about him. But alas for the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed! It had been a happy thing for that man had he never been born. Also during the meal he took a Passover biscuit, blessed it, and broke it. He then gave it to them, saying, Take this, it is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and handed it to them, and they all of them drank from it. This is my blood, he said which is to be poured out on behalf of many, the blood which makes the covenant sure. I solemnly tell you that never again will I taste the produce of the vine till I shall drink the new wine in the kingdom of God. After singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then said Jesus to them, All of you are about to stumble and fall, for it is written, I will strike down the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered in all directions. But after I have risen to life again, I will go before you into Galilee. All may stumble and fall, said Peter, yet I never will. I solemnly tell you, replied Jesus, that today, this night, before the cock crows twice, you yourself will three times disown me. Even if I must die with you, declared Peter again and again, I, I will never disown you. In like manner, protested also all the disciples. So they came to a place called Gethsemane. There he said to his disciples, Sit down here till I have prayed. Then he took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be full of terror and distress. And he said to them, My heart is oppressed with anguish to the very point of death. Wait here and keep awake. 
going forward a short distance, he threw himself upon his face and prayed repeatedly that, if it was possible, he might be spared that time of agony. And he said, Abba, my father, all things are possible for thee. Take this cup of suffering away from me, and yet not what I desire, but what thou desirest. Then he came and found them asleep, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Had you not strength to keep awake a single hour? Be wakeful, all of you, and keep on praying, that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is right willing, but the body is frail. He again went away and prayed, using the very same words. When he returned, he again found them asleep, for they were very tired, and they knew not how to answer him. A third time he came, and then he said, Sleep on and rest. Enough! The hour has come. Even now they are betraying the Son of Man into the hands of sinful men. Rouse yourselves. Let us be going. My betrayer is close at hand. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came and with him a crowd of men armed with swords and cudgels, sent by the high priests and scribes and elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss, he said, is the man. Lay hold of him, and take him safely away. So he came, and going straight to Jesus, he said, Rabbi, and kissed him with seeming affection. Whereupon they laid hands on him and held him firmly. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck a blow at the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Have you come out, said Jesus, with swords and cudgels to arrest me, as if you had to fight with a robber? Day after day I used to be among you in the temple teaching, and you never seized me. But this is happening in order that the scriptures may be fulfilled. Then his friends all forsook him and fled. One youth indeed did follow him, wearing only a linen cloth round his bare body. Of him they laid hold, but he left the linen cloth in their hands and fled without it. So they led Jesus away to the high priest, and with him there assembled all the high priests, elders, and scribes. Peter followed Jesus at a distance as far as the outer court of the high priest's palace, but there he remained sitting among the officers and warming himself by the fire. Meanwhile the high priests and the entire Sanhedrin were endeavoring to get evidence against Jesus in order to put him to death, but could find none. For though many gave false testimony against him, their statements did not tally. Then some came forward as witnesses and falsely declared, We have heard him say, I will pull down this sanctuary built by human hands, and three days afterwards I will erect another built without hands. But not even in this shape was their testimony consistent. At last the high priest stood up, and advancing into the midst of them all, asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is the meaning of all this that these witnesses allege against you? But he remained silent and gave no reply. A second time the high priest questioned him. Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? he said. I am, replied Jesus, and you and others will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the divine power and coming amid the clouds of the sky. Rending his garments, the high priest exclaimed, What need have we of witnesses after that? You all heard his impious words. What is your judgment? Then with one voice they condemned him as deserving of death. Thereupon some began to spit on him and to blindfold him, while striking him with their fists and crying, Prove that you are a prophet! The officers too struck him with open hands as they took him in charge. Now while Peter was below in the quadrangle, one of the high priest's maidservants came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with Jesus the Nazarene. But he denied it, and said, I don't know, I don't understand, what do you mean? And then he went out into the outer court. Just then a cock crowed. Again the maidservant saw him, and again began to say to the people standing by, He is one of them. A second time he repeatedly denied it. Soon afterwards the bystanders again accused Peter, saying, You are surely one of them, for you too are a Galilean but he broke out into curses and oaths, declaring, I know nothing of the man you are talking about. No sooner had he spoken than a cock crowed for the second time, 
and Peter recollected the words of Jesus. Before the cock crows twice, you will three times disown me. And as he thought of it, he wept aloud. Chapter 15 At earliest dawn, after the high priests had held a consultation with the elders and scribes, they and the entire Sanhedrin bound Jesus and took him away and handed him over to Pilate. So Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? he asked. I am, replied Jesus. Then, as the high priests went on heaping accusations on him, Pilate again and again asked him, Do you make no reply? Listen to the many charges they are bringing against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate wondered. Now at the festival it was customary for Pilate to release to the Jews any one prisoner whom they might beg off from punishment. And at this time a man named Barabbas was in prison among the insurgents, persons who in the insurrection had committed murder. So the people came crowding up, asking Pilate to grant them the usual favor. "'Shall I release for you the king of the Jews?' answered Pilate, for he could see that it was out of sheer spite that the high priests had handed him over. But the high priests urged on the crowd to obtain Barabbas's release in preference, and when Pilate again asked them, what then shall I do to the man you call king of the Jews? They once more shouted out, Crucify him! Why, what crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they vehemently shouted, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the mob, released Barabbas for them, and after scourging Jesus, handed him over for crucifixion. Then the soldiers led him away into the court of the palace, the praetorium, and calling together the whole battalion, they arrayed him in crimson, placed on his head a wreath of thorny twigs which they had twisted, and went on to salute him with shouts of, Long live the king of the Jews! Then they began to beat him on the head with a cane, to spit on him, and to do him homage on bended knees. At last, having finished their sport, they took the robe off him, put his own clothes on him, and led him out to crucify him. One Simon, a Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing along, coming from the country. Him they compelled to carry his cross. So they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which being translated means skull ground. Here they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he refused it. Then they crucified him. This done, they divided his garments among them, drawing lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. Over his head was the notice in writing of the charge against him, The King of the Jews. And together with Jesus they crucified two robbers, one at his right hand and one at his left. And all the passers-by reviled him. They shook their heads at him and said, Ah! You who were for destroying the sanctuary and building a new one in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the high priests also, as well as the scribes, kept on scoffing at him, saying to one another, He has saved others. Himself he cannot save. This Christ, the King of Israel, let him come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Even the men who were being crucified with him heaped insults on him. At noon, there came a darkness over the whole land, lasting till three o'clock in the afternoon. But at three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi! Eloi! Lama sabachthani! Which means, My God! My God! Why hast thou forsaken me? Some of the bystanders hearing him said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. Then a man ran to fill a sponge with sour wine, and he put it on the end of a cane, and placed it to his lips, saying at the same time, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. But Jesus uttered a loud cry, and yielded up his spirit. And the curtain in the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood in front of the cross saw that he was dead, he exclaimed, 
this man was indeed God's son. There were also a party of women looking on from a distance, among them being both Mary of Magdala and Mary the mother of James the Little and of Joses and Salome, all of whom in the Galilean days had habitually been with him and cared for him, as well as many other women who had come up to Jerusalem with him. Towards sunset, as it was the preparation, that is, the day preceding the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea came, a highly respected member of the council, who himself also was living in expectation of the kingdom of God. He summoned up courage to go in to see Pilate and beg for the body of Jesus. But Pilate could hardly believe that he was already dead. He called, however, for the centurion and inquired whether he had been long dead. And having ascertained the fact, he granted the body to Joseph. He, having bought a sheet of linen, took him down wrapped him in the sheet, and laid him in a tomb, hewn in the rock, after which he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary of Magdala and Mary the mother of Joses were looking on to see where he was put. Chapter 16 When the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices in order to come and anoint his body. So, very soon after sunrise on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb, and they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But then, looking up, they saw that the stone was already rolled back, for it was of immense size. Upon entering the tomb they saw a young man sitting at their right hand, clothed in a long white robe. They were astonished and terrified, but he said to them, do not be terrified. It is Jesus you are looking for, the Nazarene who has been crucified. He has come back to life. He is not here. This is the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee, and that there you will see him as he told you. So they came out and fled from the tomb for they were greatly agitated and surprised, and they said not a word to any one, for they were afraid. But he rose to life early on the first day of the week, and appeared first to Mary of Magdala, from whom he had expelled seven demons. She went and brought the tidings to those who had been with him, as they were mourning and weeping, but they, when they were told that he was alive and that she had seen him, could not believe it. Afterwards he showed himself in another form to two of them as they were walking on their way into the country. These again went and told the news to the rest, but not even them did they believe. Later still he showed himself to the eleven themselves whilst they were at table, and he upbraided them with their unbelief and obstinacy in not having believed those who had seen him alive. Then he said to them, Go the whole world over, and proclaim the good news to all mankind. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he who disbelieves will be condemned. And signs shall attend those who believe, even such as these. By making use of my name they shall expel demons, they shall speak new languages, they shall take up venomous snakes, and if they drink any deadly poison it shall do them no harm whatever. They shall lay their hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. So the Lord Jesus, after having thus spoken to them, was taken up into heaven, and sat down at the right hand of God. But they went out and made proclamation everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming their message by the signs which accompanied it. The End of Chapters 13-16 through 16 and the end of the Gospel according to Mark from the New Testament in Modern Speech, translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Recording by Mark Penfold.